Hello everyone and welcome back to my Mars colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 1.6.1 and this episode we begin with the adjustment burn for this Mars transfer vehicle our huge main part of the mission and uh, we can see there's some boil off going on you can see there so that's happening I wish it wasn't but we are time warping to the node I decided not to move it because it's actually more of a prograde thing and that would be better done closer to Earth rather than further on, I think. So, and we probably need to get started, you know, a week or two ahead of time, given that this is an ion engine burn. So this should be good. At least our solar panel orientation is optimal. That's excellent. As, uh, as it should be for any burn around the sun because you know, when you think about prograde, we'll be pointing in this direction so your panels can be like this. Um, and in normal, you can still turn your panels so that they all face the sun. The only situation where they wouldn't all face the sun is radial, and you definitely don't want to do that. So so we're good. And uh, let's, let's go for it. I don't know how long it's going to take. But... Um, Power to man, we're, we're good on everything. We won't be able to do full throttle with the ion engines around Mars. You can see that the power to man is 378 kilowatts and our supply is 500, which I believe to be correct. So we'll only be able to do whatever 250 divided by 378 is. And that's the throttle limit around Mars, but it's not too bad. Okay, so uh, this being where we are, let me turn off RCS. It should be good enough to... It has a reaction wheel. So what I want is not... Uh, I want dynamic. Which will keep it pointed in the same relation to our prograde vector. Okay. Right. Well, at least it's, it's making progress. It might be that I've started too early. We'll find out. We want to hit the midway point on this burn at T minus zero, of course. Still, there'll be inaccuracies, as you might expect. Um, okay, we're too early. Okay, so I'm going to throttle down there. And I'm going to tell it to... Well, let me time warp closer to the node. Okay, back to SAS and persistent rotation. Continuing. Okay, the node vector is sort of drifting off. I'm going to throttle down and I'm going to replot now. Taking a look at the situation, we're, we've got an apoapsis past Mars orbit, and but it's not showing me any sort of indication right now. So I'll stop recording and I'll do the fine tuning. Okay, this 154.8 meter per second burn should get us close to Mars. The question is when I ought to start it. And I'm going to go with like it's 100 meters per second per day is my current estimate. So we don't need to start right now. We need uh, maybe 18 hours will do the trick. And panels still facing the sun, though we are somewhat radial now, we're not flat radial, so it's still mostly getting good sunlight. After this correction, I'll do the artificial gravity thing. I think we ought to. But I don't know how well persistent rotation is going to like that, but if I want it to hold some sort of orientation with the sun. Hmm. I mean, I guess it's trivial to do the artificial gravity thing. In principle, this can do artificial gravity by rotating at a rate of three rotations per minute. And uh, indications are that that's okay for crew comfort to rotate at three rotations per minute. And that will generate um, about Mars gravity. I'll have to do the exact measurements on our current length. But this is long enough. It'll depend on where they are, actually. So um, the further away they are, the more gravity they'll have. 
Okay, let's see what's going on at Mars. Hopefully something. Oh, there, there's our orbit coming in. Yeah, I think it's more important to keep solar orientation than to try the artificial gravity idea. I don't think Kerbalism is going to respond to the artificial gravity anyway. Okay, I'll hold it right there. And we need to do a burn at apoapsis to start slowing down. Right, because slowing down is a long process for this thing. It's not... Uh, So in order to start slowing down, it needs to boost its orbit up, uh, like that. Okay, so what I've got here is a 1,375 meter per second correction at apoapsis with, uh, I guess we would expect a 14 day burn time based on my estimate of 100 meters per second per day. And so that's over here. Now you'll notice a pretty significant radial burn because as we do this burn to boost our orbit here, we also need to sort of slide over where we encounter Mars, right? Otherwise we'll just miss it because initially we plotted to hit it already. And if you boost your orbit, you're slowing, di uh, uh, speeding up, right? <laughs> anyway, whatever we're doing, uh, we're slowing down with respect to Mars, but speeding up overall, it's complicated. So we need to do a radial burn to correct for that. Uh, fortunately, it just adds about 200 meters per second to the overall burn, which is worth it. Um, if we take a look uh, when we get there, after the burn, if it'll let me plot something. No? Uh, okay, uh, coming in there. Okay, yeah, add maneuver. And how much does it take to actually capture into orbit now, after the burn? Before the burn, it was 2,500 or so. This is a bare capture right now. 1,200. So basically they sum up to be the same thing. Um, so it, it it evens out at the end. Of course we'll eventually want to get into a lower orbit, but we can do that after cycling around a few times, of course. And uh, yeah, uh, of course uh, in preparation for this burn because right here it would take, let's say, 12 days to do that capture burn. We're gonna have to figure something out along the way in uh, well along the way in, well before we get there in 302 days, so maybe 10, 12 days before that. But uh, this looks like a good node in general to do, and uh, it'll cut down on how much of a burn we need to do closer to Mars. So that'll be in 236 days, and I'm going to add that to the alarm. Basically similar to the burn that we already did, so I have a good understanding of how to execute it this time. And this seems not quite all set up. Instead of dynamic, I just want relative rotation to the sun. That'll be fine. And for now it seems to be charging okay. And now uh, I'm gonna time warp a bit and then we have to do a couple of correction, well, a bunch of correction burdens. So first the Phobos Super Lander H2. Okay, so this is sort of puzzling. I started time warping for the Phobos Superlander at the tracking station, leaving this of course, and on after only a few days the electric charge had depleted. Now, we hadn't moved around the sun enough to have the solar panels not aligned, and so there was no reason for it to lose electric charge, assuming Kerbalism understood that they were pointed in this vague direction. Heck, even if it uh, had the tail to it or whatever, it shouldn't have depleted electric charge that quickly. Regardless of persistent rotation, because I don't think persistent rotation had to do too much to keep them oriented. So, okay, we're here, we're fully charged. I'm gonna go back to the tracking station and we're gonna see how long it takes for us to lose electric charge. Even if only one panel is pointed, that should be enough to keep the thing charged, of course. Mars scanner battery's getting low. I had visited the Mars scanner too. Oh, there's the other Mars scanner. Well, we got to visit that. I mean, technically, we might not have to have to visit that, but 
I feel better about it. Also, uh, well, I mean, it's obviously pointed in the right direction now, but that was probably a persistent rotation correction will allow for that. Mars scanner. Did we go to the wrong one? We went to the wrong one. I, okay, so if it runs out of electric charge, now I had corrected this one before already. Um, does that mean persistent rotation doesn't do its thing anymore? These stupid panels should have been tracking, but they aren't. Uh, but yeah, I'm wondering whether if it runs out of electric charge, persistent rotation no longer operates. That might be the case. Well, we better not take any chances on SAP pack. Yeah, if persistent rotation doesn't correct itself, uh, correct it when there's no electric charge, then that would be a problem. Mars transfer vehicle battery's getting low. It's only been three days, three, four days. There's no way the orientation of the vessels should have been such that the panels were obscured from the sun. Yeah, I mean, of course, I can't say that persistent rotation didn't just fix it, but I can't see which orientation would have caused this to not get sunlight. So, yeah. This is already getting annoying. I don't want to focus on it too much. Maybe maybe I should just be in flight mode. Well, no, that caused problems anyway. Let's go back to the tracking station. Uh, Mars scanner again. This is still in a bad orientation for electric charge, but apparently charged. And this one's still oriented fine, but ran out of electric charge. Pretty darn quickly, too, I might say. Mars transfer vehicle again. I don't think I can manage this. Oh, now it says it's out of electric charge. That would be disastrous if there were a crew on there, because that'd kill them. I need a way... I think I might have to disable Kerbalism tracking electric charge. I think that's come to that. There's, uh, there's just no sense to it. There's no way that in only a few days it's uh, turned in orientation in some way that would prevent it from getting sunlight. I mean, certainly not this thing. And there's no planet in the way now. But yet it uh, uh, kills the electric charge. It's going to take a long time for me to get to Mars if we keep having to turn to these things. Especially if there's crew on board this one. Well, I guess I can stick with this, but then something else, the one of the Mars scanners. Interesting, it's just the Mars scanners that have a problem. Well, I guess the SAP pack also did. But I haven't heard a peep from the other missions yet. That might be indicative of something or another. Maybe it's KSP Interstellar messing with something and some of the panels are configured by it and others aren't, but then there's my SAP pack isn't, so... Okay, hold on. Let me see if there's a configuration way to stop it from panicking about electric charge. Because, yeah, I mean, I could just hope that persistent rotation will correct things even if we run out of electric charge, but... As we've seen with one of the Mars scanners, it seems like persistent rotation no longer operates when there's no electric charge. It doesn't reorient it properly after that. So I don't know. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll give it one more try, I suppose. Uh, so this Mars scanner, I think, is this one. Maybe I should wait until it's out of electric charge and see what happens. Is out and also not oriented prop. Well, I mean, it ran through quite a lot and is also not oriented properly. Why? Maybe I should just keep it to this time warp level. Maybe if I go past this time warp level. Nope, that wasn't any sort of theory. Here's the Mars transfer vehicle again running out of power. 
after a few days. This is not really a feature of Kerbalism that I ever wanted. <laughs> uh, it, it managing the electric charge? No, it's fine. I, I'll put the electric charge on and we'll be good. I don't need you to track the electric charge during time warp. You're not doing a very good job of it, Kerbalism. <laughs> You're just not. So, yeah. Let's see if I can turn that off. All right. Okay, well, I didn't see any configuration way to turn off EC electric charge tracking uh, for Kerbalism. I mean, of course, you could turn off the notifications, but that's not necessarily a good thing. Um, I did comment out the bit that would, I think, kill Kerbals with the lack of electric charge. It's uh, climatization rule and uh, hopefully commenting that out will at least prevent the Kerbals from dying when the electric charge is considered depleted. But again, temporary thing, hopefully. But there is a warp fixer module that was added to the solar panels. I'm not, it says that uh, it makes the stock panel module work correctly at arbitrary warp speed and electric charge capacity. And what I'm wondering about that warp fixer, I've actually taken a look at the, the, the code for it, but I don't understand what's going on, unfortunately. But uh, I was just wondering whether it's properly doing the time warp steps, because of course real solar system changes the time warp steps. So that I don't know. I assume that if I actually get rid of the warp fixer module, that that will cause problems and not be a solution to what I want to have done. So right now it's still tracking electric charge. And I'll tell you what, I'm not going to, I'm not going to pay attention to when they say, I'm just not going to turn to the vessel when it says electric charge is depleted and we will see what happens. We'll just time warp straight through to the Phobos Superlander. And yeah, yep, that, that's going to be the plan. Because otherwise I don't have time to deal with everything if I keep jumping around. I've, of course, zipped up the save just in case. <laughs> just in case this all goes horribly wrong. Now, again, it's interesting. This Phobos Superlander never has given any indication that it's out of power. Neither has the Pioneer Station module or the Xenon refueler. Those are have been apparently immune. Right now we're not getting any more messages. It's just the Mars scanner, the sat pack, and the Mars transfer vehicle. Just those missions. It's certainly well charged. I wonder... Hmm... No, that wouldn't explain the sat pack. I was thinking, what what if uh, it had something to do with the tweak scaling thing that people had mentioned, but my sat pack does not have tweak scaling on it. Those were just the solar panels as specified. So anyway, let's time warp a little bit more to the correction that we have to do. I note the communication signal strength is 71% there and fluctuating though. That might be a problem because when Earth is on the opposite side of the Sun from... See, we've only got this length to deal with, but that's going to get pretty stretched. Well, now it says signal strength 95%, but when it said 71%, that does not seem to be enough. We've got both of these dishes out. Okay, a little bit off there. Let's see what kind of correction will be necessary inside the SOI to fix that. Not a whole lot. Okay, so uh, we can just add, add that correction. And next we have to turn to Mars Scanner 2, which also we haven't heard anything from. Now this obviously is not a good angle. So uh, let me turn off SES. Rotate a little bit. A relative rotation to sun confirmed. Okay, Mars Scanner 2. Well, everything good with Mars Scanner 2, it looks like. Still 
signal strength. Oh, it's bouncing through the Pioneer Station module. That's why there was the 71% versus 95%. So it needs the Pioneer Station module to communicate. Hopefully the Pioneer Station module itself has full range. And that the 95% is just uh, because of the distance between this and the Pioneer Station module. In that case, it'll be fine. Well, the other Mars scanner seems to have rehabilitated. That's good. That leaves Mars Transfer Vehicle and SAT Pack without power, supposedly, so far. Another thing I saw in the configurations was uh, a module that appeared to manage ion engine power, a planner controller. It says ionized gas propel propelled engines need EC, which is true. And it says for any part that has uh, module engines that has an electric charge propellant, it has this additional module called planner controller. But I don't know exactly what that does. I, but I'm wondering whether it could cause problems for something like the Mars transfer vehicle in terms of time warping with it. Wouldn't explain to Mars scanners though. Okay, well, not exactly the approach I want here. But let's just see. It shouldn't take too much to fix that. We want this to get to Phobos, so we need to be roughly in line with Phobos. 10 meters per second is not a bad deal. So. Yeah, and let's just take a look at how much it's going to take to make orbit. Do some planning right now. Could be that the other Mars scanner might actually... Oop, well, that's convenient. Okay, and how much does, it, does this take? 3,000. That'll leave us with uh, uh, 1,400 and or so to make orbit around Phobos. Now, we're not going to do it quite like this, but... Okay, that's that's a Phobos orbit right there, 552. So this can do it. Maybe the other one can do it too. Actually, I guess it'd take less to. Depends on the boost up part. Maybe it'd take less to get to Deimos. So maybe the other one should do that. Okay, but we've definitely got a nice little encounter going with this. So certainly we're going to get that maneuver in. And next up, the SAT pack. Well, this is definitely out of electric charge, and yeah, persistent rotation did not rescue it. Persistent rotation has not rescued it because I guess if you're out of power, um, persistent rotation is not going to do that correction. So, yeah, and this is directional. These panels don't rotate, so persistent rotation has to do its thing and we might not get these I don't know we may not get these commsats and we gotta miss this but it was only a minor burn anyway we could probably take care of what needs to be taken care of over there if it so happens that that's a better orientation with respect to the Sun This was left with SAS and supposed to have persistent rotation on it. But we did not get that because it ran out of power when it shouldn't have. Anyway, uh, if it turns out that we... I'm going to time warp to this, but we're not going to get power. If it turns out that we don't have power when we get there. Maybe you guys can tell me what you want me to do about it. I mean, of course, there there are possibilities. Cheats. Well, we are not going to get power back right now. I could stick with it for the next 20 days and see if it turns towards the sun, though. Let's do that. Because it does seem to be not entirely stable right now. Come on. You can do it. Uh oh no okay that's just cheats right there it was about to uh, okay so this must be a time warp irregularity this whole turning it isn't actually turning 
it's lying to us. And then once I come out of time warp, it's gonna it's gonna snap back. Well, I don't even have to come out of time warp; it just snaps back. Apparently now it's persistently rotating in this direction. I, okay. Well, anyway, we've we I can't even delete the maneuver node. Fine. Uh, just give me the SOI change. We'll pay attention to that later on, unless you guys want me to rescue it in some surreptitious way. On to the Mars scanner here. I guess the other Mars scanner is... That was a quick turnaround between it giving me the first warning and the second, even though it pulled me out of time warp. Hmm. I will pay attention if Mars scanner 2 says it's out of power, since we've got that nice Phobos encounter that I would really like to make. It's funny, um, no, no. Oh, so if I click on Mars directly here, it doesn't show anything. But if I click over here, it does. Earth and Venus appear to be fine, but Mars? See, I click, 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 click. Starting around here, I get it. I, I have no idea. Sometimes this game, you know, I mean, it was never meant to be a precision game like this, of course. Uh, so, I mean, it's partly my fault, I will grant you. I have such expectations. Okay, well, that's a little bit too much in the atmosphere. So we're going to have another node here to get a little bit out of the atmosphere. And we'll add that alarm. Okay, that should hold. And speaking of the Pioneer, Pioneer Station module, that's next. Well, looking at the Pioneer Station module here in the tracking station, it's sort of simultaneously fascinating and concerning that everything is sort of communicating through it and its own line, that is its own line, right? Its own line appears to be somewhat yellowing. Uh, there are other ones around here, but I think the Pioneer Station module is the only one with a relay, especially now that the, uh, well, I mean, we had relay satellites on the sat pack, but that's not, op they, well, they weren't operational either because they haven't decoupled yet. Oh, if you're wondering, yes, the big solar panels on the sat pack are enough to power all of the satellites on it. So even without their panel, oh, and speaking of which, sat pack Sajita batteries have been recharged somehow okay well let's jump to that before we do anything else I don't know what's happening with these satellites I really don't because <laughs> we definitely left the sat pack in an orientation that was not gonna recharge and it really was very very firm on staying in that orientation well then we might as well do the correction we're 20 days late but it'll probably end up all right if we do it slightly different. It's um, it's got ten thousand electric charge right now. Yep, I think we need even better comsats. Maybe the ones on here will be better, but um, well, yeah, these comsats that we've got tucked in here are twenty G. Is that gonna be enough? Oh, this is our current orbit. Why do we even want this orbit here? <laughs> And seem like, yeah, we don't need to do that. I don't think. I mean, we might want to adjust the tilt a little bit, but not that much. Okay, we are totally pointed at the sun. Okay. Relative rotation, sun. Maybe I should pick the other sun. I don't know. Does it matter? Probably not. It is recharging, as planned and yeah okay pioneer station module okay well during the time warp up to this um i stopped by the phobos super lander to get it recharged and actually the sat pack lost charge again so yeah this is fine though this has been fine it's got two of these big antennae commutron 
40 G a piece and signal strength is 53 percent so that's totally not enough pretty sure they said that they would be enough but apparently not looks like I have to go to the Jupiter class ones to get good range mind you I don't have remote tech so where is this gonna be pointing exactly yeah I think maybe the descriptions are expecting remote tech and I don't have remote tech I, I don't know I might have to review the stock antenna ranges before next time because I don't think they're doing what they're supposed to be doing realism overhaul to a large extent expects you to be using remote tech but that's redundant with uh, Kerbalism at least in theory okay I've made the correction with RCS let's get this oriented funny thing is I can easily see how this could have its solar panels blocked well, I, well the top ones sort of help though but uh, yeah I guess maybe that is what helped it. I never got an alarm for this one. I yeah, I should just put solar panels all over the place instead of relying on the persistent rotation to do it properly. This is when not having a budget helps. So I'll keep that in mind for next time. Okay, so if we can just get this stabilized, it should be all right. And we are getting closer to our arrivals. I think this Mars scanner is an arrival node and then the rest are all arrival times okay I'm gonna leave this be let's go check on our Mars transfer vehicle uh, immediately rather than waiting the 92 days okay well the solar panels are facing the Sun now so it is recharging and I'll time warp through its recharging but we'll take care of uh, this burn next time I do want to stop by the VAB and check on the antennae Okay, so taking a look at the descriptions, we've got the Commutron 88-88 and that said good for Jupiter and a little beyond. So presumably under remote tech it would have that kind of range. And if it turns out it doesn't have that kind of range with our current setup, I mean this is sandbox so we have level 3 DSN and everything. Mm, that translates to 125 million kilometers. So probably that's not enough to satisfy what that dish is supposed to be able to do and so I might I'll just change it if necessary to be honest and um, uh, this this might not have had the kind of range we wanted that does and I'll have to see so I won't touch this one I do get to decide exactly how much range my own satellites have of course so there is always that but uh, yep yeah so I'll have to see how that works out all right well this has been sort of a slow episode because we were just doing all the transit stuff all the burns to make sure things were getting properly to Mars and having sort of frustrations about the trip but next time is arrivals so everything is going to be arriving at Mars and that will be that will be good, hopefully, assuming everything goes well. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.